In this episode, a young teacher who is out jogging comes face to face with a large, lone wolf. The encounter turns deadly as the wolf collaborates with another to hunt her down in the Alaskan wilderness. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the terrifying wolf attack on Candace Burner. Welcome to Final Affliction. Candace Burner was a 32-year-old special education teacher, originally from Pennsylvania. She was hired by the Lake and Peninsula School Borough to teach at Perryville, Alaska. In March 2010, she was assigned to teach in the remote settlement of Chickdick Lake. This community is situated just over 470 miles southwest of Anchorage on the Alaskan Peninsula. The wilderness that surrounds the community of 74 people is home to foxes, wolverines, brown bears, and wolves. On the 8th of March, 2010, Candace flew in to Chignik Lake. She spent the day teaching the 17 students at the school there. At the end of the day, she told her colleagues that she was going to head out for a run along the only track leading out of the settlement. She faxed her timesheet through to the district office at 10 past 5 and left the school. She changed into her running gear and headed out. The temperature was about 20 degrees Fahrenheit, or minus 6 Celsius. There were two hours of daylight left, but in less than an hour, Candace was dead. The following story is put together from the evidence presented by wildlife officers, Alaskan state troopers, and eyewitnesses. As she ran along the track, the snow crunched under her feet. She left footprints in the snow. The direction of these footprints would later provide valuable evidence in understanding the events around her death. The track winded its way towards the open tundra. On either side, there were trees and shrubs, and hidden amongst these, there was a predator. Less than two miles into her run, Candace suddenly stopped in her tracks. Around a corner, she spotted a lone wolf standing in the middle of the road. Candace froze. The hairs stood up on the back of her neck. She took the earphones out of her ears and breathed heavily, unsure what to do. She took a few steps backwards, watching the wolf carefully. It kept its eyes locked on Candace. Standing almost three feet at the shoulder and weighing 100 pounds, nearly 60 kilograms, it had an imposing presence. The wolf had been tracking Candace. It was hunting her. As it began walking towards her, Candace headed back the way she had come. She didn't want to encourage it by running. Instead, she walked as quickly as she could. But when she looked back over her shoulder, she saw the wolf trotting towards her. With nowhere to run to and nowhere to hide, Candace sprinted away. The wolf ran at her, and a second wolf had joined in the chase. Unbeknown to Candace, the second wolf had been watching her every move. Within seconds, both wolves pounced on top of Candace. She was sent crashing to the ground. Kicking and fighting furiously, Candace scrabbled about in the snow as the wolves bit into her skin and tore her flesh. She screamed out in pain and anguish. Lashing out, she hit them in the face, and they momentarily let go. Candace leapt to her feet. She was injured and bleeding heavily from a bite wound in her leg. She sprinted along the track, crying out for help, but help didn't come. She left a red trail in the snow, but managed to make it 30 feet before the wolves struck again. Evidence that a struggle ensued was shown by depressions in the snow, a torn mitten left by Candace, and marks made by her crawling on all fours as she tried desperately to escape the wolves. She only managed to crawl 10 feet before the wolves delivered their fatal bites. Her body was dragged off the track and down the hill into the undergrowth. The wolves tucked into their kill. Less than half an hour later, four locals were returning from Dorner Bay on their snowmobiles. They traveled along the track when the lead motorist spotted a pool of bright red blood in the snow. This was where Candace had been attacked the first time. Looking all around them, they cautiously followed the trail of blood. It led them to a second pool of blood surrounded by a large patch of melted snow. This was where the wolves had killed Candace. 
The men peered over the side of the track and down the hill. There, they saw Candace's body, 80 feet from where she had been killed. They rushed back to their snowmobiles and sped off to Chignik to report the finding. It was a shocking discovery for such a small and close-knit community. Three members from the police department accompanied one of the men back to the site. They stood guard, awaiting instructions from state officials. The bitterly cold night was setting in. The men shuffled uneasily on their feet as they stood watch. They continually scanned the surrounding undergrowth. They knew they were sitting ducks. At the time, although they suspected a wolf attack from the footprints left in the snow, they didn't know how many had been responsible for Candace's death. All they knew was that anywhere from 2 to 20 wolves were likely to be very close by. They were probably watching them, waiting for their chance to get back to their meal. When two of them could stand the cold no longer, they headed back to Chignik to fetch some warmer clothing. The remaining officer sat on his snowmobile, continually circling the area near Candace's body. He used the headlight to search for any approaching wolves. He knew he was in danger, but they couldn't just leave the woman's body out in the wilderness. Then he spotted the telltale glint of eyes peering back at him. He turned the snowmobile to face the pair of eyes. There, standing tall in front of him, was a single wolf. Its bold presence was unsettling. The officer took off in fear on his snowmobile and headed back to the community, abandoning Candace's body. He returned later with a team of officers and locals and discovered Candace's body had been dragged further away and further consumed. By examining the wolf footprints in the snow, investigators were able to determine that four wolves had been involved with the attack. Although it's thought that only two delivered the fatal bites, they worked together as a pack. Whilst one chased Candace along the snow-covered track, the other ran in from the opposite direction, cutting her off. In the aftermath of the tragedy, a young woman's life had been cut tragically short, and the local residents needed to feel safe again. They were afraid. Reports came in of the locals seeing shimmering eyes reflecting in the beams of flashlights. Two wolves were spotted nearby. Locals had taken it upon themselves to try to track and kill any wolves in the area. Wildlife officer Lem Butler decided to commission two hunters to kill any wolves within a 30-mile radius of the community. It took several days before they caught any wolves. In total, they culled eight wolves. Six of these animals were in excellent condition, some even considered fat by experts. Two, however, were emaciated and hungry. They were youngsters and may not have been successful hunters of typical prey, like moose, that were abundant in the area. It is not known whether any of the culled wolves were responsible for the attack. It was initially thought that the wolves stalked Candace, but upon further investigation, experts have suggested that the sudden encounter between Candace and the wolves may have been as much as a surprise to them as it was to her. However, her small body frame of only 4 feet 10 inches and weight of only 115 pounds may have turned their initial encounter into an opportunistic attack. Whatever happened to Candace, it is sad that she lost her life doing what she loved. It is sad that she was alone with no one to help her. And it is sad that eight wolves, most or all of which could have been innocent, were killed as a result.